Okay, well, this is my galley. It's the first thing you see when you step into the boat. And guys, this is the galley of a man who eats craft dinner out of the pot. This is not a chef's galley. This is a freaking mess. And it's been a freaking mess for a long time. Now, there's a good couple of good progress. We did remove power tools. There are no longer power tools. Once upon a time, there was a skill saw here. That's gone. You know, this, the tools, the tools haven't moved far, but at least they're not on the counter. Uh, but that doesn't mean that it's done. I've got a lot of work to do on this and I'd really like to get it done. So this episode is all about turning this into a respectable, real galley. All right, so the first step in finishing this, sponsor of today's ap episode, Acuva. Ignore the mess behind me. So Acuva sent me out their Aeromax 2.0. This is a complete UV LED water disinfection system. Basically, you can filter and kill all bacteria that make its way into your water system. The box is pretty big and it comes with two littler boxes inside. It's like a, a Russian nesting doll. Wow, wow. Look at that build quality. You can hear that it's, it's not like solid steel all the way through, but that's an, a, like a really skookum aluminum housing on the exterior. Wow. This is really nice. And it looks like it uses the same type of connectors that uh, I use for my breaker switches. So I've actually got a bunch of bars that this will already fit on. Nice. So this is the uh, UV LED housing. Um, we've got one of their pre-filters here. We've got your wiring, which is already set up directly to wire hard wire 12 volt into your uh, off-grid system. Wow, yeah, so this system's already set up to run 12 volt all throughout. So if you've got a RV, you know, I knew that when I was in a camper van, like my sources of water changed all the time. It was really unreliable. Um, you really didn't know what you were gonna get. Uh, sometimes I filled at gas stations. Sometimes I filled at Starbucks. Sometimes I filled at campsites, but you know, you don't know what kind of filtration system they have. Whoa, that is really nice. This like, this is so cool. This matches my tap perfectly. Oh, this is gonna look so good. Oh, I'm like, just look at how thick that aluminum is. That heft of it feels like stainless steel, actually. Okay, I'm excited. Let's plug this in. Two. All right, well, now we need 12 volt power. So we're just gonna prime the system right now. There's still a little bit of air in the filters, plus the filters need to kind of get all of their storage-ness out and the, any kind of dust particles that might be in there from the manufacturing. So we're gonna let this run for a little bit, uh, but it, that gives me an opportunity to explain why this is a smart water tap. It's not just smart because that's trendy to say. It's smart because as you turn it on and off, as you can tell from that beautiful little blue light, the UV filter down below, which is burning power, turns on and off as well. So you're not burning any juice when you're not pulling up any water, which is nice and handy and great for off-grid situations where every watt of power matters. <sighs> well, tastes like water. Don't know what to tell you. It's clean water, it just tastes like water. But this system is really set up for all you off-gridders and boaters and RVers and stuff because a lot of us don't necessarily know the quality of the water that we're getting. I know that when I was traveling around in my camper van, I got my water 
many times from questionable sources. Um, and that's just the name of the game, but this takes the guesswork out. This means that you have nice, clean water, no bacteria, no viruses, cleans out 99.9999999999%. You know, like it does almost, for legal reasons, it doesn't do everything, but it, it kind of does everything. So thank you to Akiva for sending that out. And uh, yeah, it's got a crazy long lifespan. So I'll be drinking my drinking water out of that thing for the next 10 years, probably. So these are your standard issue teak cabinet doors. You can actually buy these from the Payne's catalog. Um, they're not entirely made of teak. I think this is like a veneer in the middle and then you've got teak on the outsides. Um, by reusing these old ones that were torn out of a motorboat over a decade ago and sitting in a back shed somewhere and they're pretty ancient, pretty conservative looking, but they still sell these exact ones in the catalog. So I actually know how much money I'm saving right now and it's a lot. If I didn't have these available to me I probably would have just made some but uh yeah since I have them I'm gonna use them. So these two right here were actually made for a sliding cabinet so I was just rabbiting them out so that I could use them as cabinet uh doors instead. <laughs> All right, so we got the front panels up. Uh, it's taking a little bit of thinking and some maths and a level and everything. But yeah, so this door needs to have hinges eventually. That looks really good. And then I put a little porthole down underneath. You can't see because my counter's just covered in stuff. This is my clean dishes porthole. So as I'm washing dishes, I throw them in here and then this is a drying rack which drips and collects into the spigot underneath the sink and drains out. Uh, and then over here on this side, I want to make sure that these doors match up and then kind of line it up with a porthole under here for the coffee maker and have kind of a coffee station right here, easy to access because coffee is very important to me. A lot of drying and not that much cutting because I'm just want to get it right the first time. Plywood's expensive right now, guys. All right, well, all the planning in the world and sometimes you still screw things up. Because they're sisters, I wanted them to be perfectly parallel, which they are, but now I don't have enough room for the little coffee station. And I can't open my coffee bit. And when I did finally cut it, of course, it doesn't line up with the shells perfectly and I'm an idiot. Okay, so cabinets are in, not painted yet, but before I can lay paint, I need to do the lower cabinets under the counter. All right, this space is a little odd. I'm walking around the galley and kind of deciding which space will do what, the hardware and cabinet doors or just holes or how that's all gonna fit out. So there's a little bit of figuring out to do here. One of the things I've really wanted to get done is put a spot for honey's food and water. It's always underfoot. I inevitably trip on it and then flip the water bowl or flip the food bowl or drop sawdust in and she won't touch it. And either way, it just ruins everything. <laughs> so we finally got a spot now and I'm just gonna build a little tray that holds her uh, food and her water.
Well, the kitchen is looking so good. I mean, I haven't done the paint yet, and of course there's a lot of tweaking to do because I haven't actually got to use it much. But in my humble opinion, much cleaner already, much better. One of the big things I've really wanted to start is baking, and I haven't been able to because my kitchen's never that clean, and now my galley kitchen is quite clean. So uh, we're gonna start today by baking a loaf of bread, the very basic thing in baking. And I'm not a baker, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm just following some instructions and just learning as I go. But step number one, bake a loaf of bread. It's probably for introspection. I feel that you're the patron god to all of my expression You relax and I'd send fun Feel classy, you're fun And since I'm already learning new things with the bread, I'm going to do the only cocktail that I have known pretty much my entire life. My grandmother taught me this recipe for a dry martini. Fun fact, I think I was like 10 years old when she taught me this. This is gonna be a gin martini. A gin martini requires a good gin, something flavorful and nice, and a little bit of dry vermouth. That's it, very simple. Just kidding, just kidding. It's stirred, not shaken. Eat your heart out, James Bond. A lot of people have other kinds of family recipes handed down through the generations. For me, that's it. Simple, beautiful martini from my beautiful woman, my grandmother, who stood up to about here on me. <laughs> and she was, uh, well, she was something else. Come on, baby, I know you'll fit. Hell yeah! Well, I won't call that a success, but you know, gotta start somewhere. Thank you, Acuva, for sponsoring this episode. I'll leave a link in the description. You guys can check them out. And thank you so much for watching. See you next week.